So this video was heavily requested in a live stream I did just a couple days ago. You all wanted me to take a look at Arctic Linux. And not only am I taking a look at Arctic Linux, but I have replaced Manjaro and installed it on my primary desktop machine, which I am currently running off of. So this is not a virtual machine, this is running on hardware. And I'm going to try to actually run this for maybe a month or two or forever, just depending on my actual experience with it. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is covering what makes Artix, Artix Linux different, why people uh, prefer it over other Arch-based Linux distributions. Uh, and then we're going to be doing the typical first impression thing because I just installed this on my, uh, on my computer and I haven't really explored the system quite yet. So we're going to check out the pre-installed programs and check out the base configuration. I, as you can see, went with the KDE Plasma version because that's just what I go with. It's what I'm comfortable with, but they do have other desktops available as well as a base install. So you can install this as if it was any other arch, well, as if it was vanilla arch. So you could use uh, commands to install it. They have options and we'll, we will be going over that. Now the main thing, the main thing that makes this different is they do not use system D. Now system D is used by basically every single Linux distribution out there. It's used by Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Vanilla Arch, and all the other Arch-based Linux distros. Now the reason for this, and you, you may have seen videos on system D, people generally do not like it. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but to give you the most base answer on why that is, is because it just, it doesn't follow the Unix philosophy. Which in simple terms, the Unix philosophy is uh, when you develop software, you should make small programs that do specific uh, applications and they do it very well. Now system, system MD is a huge, or system D, I'm saying system MD. System D is a huge piece of software. And you'll notice if you've ever needed to like use a command to restart a service, it was a system D command. So you would do that to like reset something like pulse audio. If you've ever needed to do that, which you probably have, but putting that aside, this comes with three different alternatives, either open RC, run it or S six. Now in the last couple hours, I've learned a little bit about open RC and run it. This one that I'm currently using is using run it. And both of these are much smaller applications that generally run better. I'm not sure uh, who develops run it. I know open RC is a Gentoo, uh, part of the Gentoo project, but like I said, I'm still kind of learning about all the, all these things. I'll, I'll link down in the description to a great article that goes over the differences between all these different services and specifically what they do. Um, one thing you might notice and one thing I did notice is run it compared to at least the system D with Manjaro that I was just running booted up about five to six seconds quicker. So that was at least the main thing I've noticed right out of the gate. Uh, one thing that is better with system D is they have better documents and uh, since everybody uses it, there's generally better support. And that just depends on what applications you're running. Like the only thing I'm not sure if it will work is I use a private internet access VPN, and I'm not sure if that will uh, work with run it, but uh, I'm gonna find out later. So with all that said, I'll have a link in the description of the article if you do want to learn more, but now let's go ahead and check out the system. First things first, we see, well, let's check out the website and then the system. Uh, this is their website right here. You can get a bunch of different information. They have a pretty good set of documents. If I go over to download, you can actually see the versions that I'm talking about. So this is the base install, just like uh, Vanilla Arch, but then you have Cinnamon, you have a couple community, uh, GTK and QT, LXTE, LXQT, Mate, Plasma, and XFCE. So a pretty good base of some of the more popular desktop environments. I went with Plasma here and I went with the Run It version. And the main reason I went with Run It is because I've seen it recommended more times than OpenRC, but both of these are fantastic. And I do not know enough about S6 to really talk about it or give an opinion. But these are all the downloads and you just uh, burn the ISO, boot into it, and it installs just like any other distribution. It uses Calamaris, so it installs very similar to something like Manjaro if you use one of these uh, that come with a desktop environment. So now looking at the actual system, first of all, this is the web browser it comes with. It doesn't come with Firefox. It comes with, if I go over to about, which honestly, the um, the only things I've done so far in the system are install OBS uh, Studio and Firefox. 
Uh, I'm not going to use Falcon because if we go over here, you can see the latest release was uh, in March of 2019. So it's kind of out of date. I'm not sure why they're still including this, but this is the web browser that it comes with. Uh, web browser aside, let's take a look at the general aesthetics. This is what it looked like right out of the gate. Uh, you can see if I right click and I go to edit panel, we can see kind of what they're using here. Uh, they're using the base application menu. They're using task manager to manage the uh, application that you currently have open. And then they just have basics, digital clock and system tray. So nothing too crazy going on. Uh, one thing, if I open up Dolphin here, this is uh, KDE Plasma, so it's going to feature a lot of the stock KDE stuff. Uh, you can see that the buttons are a little different. They got these square buttons. The um, uh, cursors here, if you take a close look at that, it's, it's a fairly unique cursor design. That's one of the things I noticed right out of the gate. If I go over here, you can see like the little thing to uh, start typing is pretty thick. Uh, so that's one thing I noticed. Uh, we'll get into the theming and all that in just a second. If I open up the application uh, menu here, um, it's not configured. There's no pre-configured favorites or anything like that. So it's pretty uh, base when it comes to any customizations that they've done. Uh, recent applications, you can see what I've been getting into. Under development, they just have all the basic QT stuff. Under graphics, they have GwenView and a PDF viewer. Under internet, uh, they have these SSH and VNC servers. They had Falcon and Concor. So if you're going to use the uh, default, I'd almost go with this uh, KDE one right here. But Firefox is definitely better than those two, in my opinion. Uh, if I go down to multimedia, they have MPV Media Player. They do not have VLC. I think that is wonderful. Uh, they use KMix and some more QT testing things. Under Office, it's just that PDF reader again. Settings, the only thing they have is system settings. Under System, they have Dolphin, HTOP is installed out of the gate, and then they have SysGuard, KWallet, a couple of the KDE things. Uh, if I open up uh, Info Center, for example, you can see here that I am running Arctic Linux, rolling release with KDE Plasma, and it does have the later versions of everything, being that this is a rolling release system. And then right here under Hardware, you can see this is actually installed on my primary computer. Now, if I go ahead and close this out, we're going to skim over the last little bit of things here. Under Utilities, we have the Emoji Selector Arc, which is the uh, file extractor tool. Uh, K, a bunch of K things, Spectacle, which is fabulous, uh, Sweeper, and then Power, you just have your Power stuff there. So there's not really too many things pre-installed on the system, which is awesome because you don't really need that. It's so easy to go ahead and grab software. It's almost kind of annoying when they just assume what you're going to want and they load up a distribution with a whole bunch of unnecessary software. Now this makes it really clean and easy to work with. Now I'm gonna open up uh, console real quick because one thing I noticed earlier when I updated the system, I don't know why I opened that small, let's make this a little bigger here, is the shell script it looks absolutely beautiful. And there are some customizations until this, um, well, this menu tab right here or this menu bar usually isn't here by default, so it's cool they added that and just the color scheming looks really good. Uh, let's do LS, and you can see that they went with some customizations here, because usually it's not colored by the by default. Uh, it's not LSD. LSD, I did a video on that, which goes over how to do that. So they do have some just basic custom co configurations in here. So they did give it just a nice enough touch that you it's unique, but they didn't go overboard with something <laughs> like something like uh, Garuda Linux that just completely changes and configures and ex adds extensions to absolutely everything they possibly can. Not to talk smack on Garuda Linux, I love the project, but I do prefer something like this that's a little more lightweight out of the gate that you can then customize and add things um, to your preferences. Now, one thing let's check out. Now, this isn't a good example because I'm running OBS Studio, so it's going to be a little higher than it should. But even with OBS Studio recording a uh, 1080p video, uh, we're rocking under 2 gigs. The CPU is running because of OBS Studio. And you can see here all the OBS stuff, but under that you can see everything that's running. And it's really not too much. It's mostly all just uh, KDE stuff. It's running really good. I'll put up a screenshot right now. Uh, of what the system is running at on boot. Um, you can see it, I can't, I didn't look yet. So that is what is going on when it comes to system resource utilization when the system first boots up. 
Now, one thing I forgot to mention before we end this video real quick is the actual theme. I'm uh, done recording the video, technically, and I'm in the middle of customizing my uh, desktop environment to how I'm comfortable with. And this is when I noticed that it has the custom Arctic theme if you are curious what it is running. If I go down to application style, you can see it's using GTK2, which is why we're getting that kind of classic feel and vibe in a lot of the different uh, applications and buttons and things like that. That's why we're getting that. If we go to plasma style, they have a custom Arctic dark, under colors, Arctic dark, and then it doesn't really come with anything else except for what you'd expect to come with uh, KDE Plasma. Under window decorations, it's plastic, which is why we have these square buttons, kind of old school looking theme here. Under fonts, you can see what they're using by default. Icons, we're just using the breeze dark out of the gate. Cursors is premium, which is what I was talking about with these uh, kind of weird, funky cursors. I'm not a fan. I'm going to end up switching out of these to something else. Uh, under font management, this is, um, well, this is normal. Uh, but that's about it as far as the theming. Figured I'd add that in as I said I would and I forgot to. So, yeah, that's about it. So with all that said, this is Arctic Linux. It's a very simple, uh, simple right out of the gate with some uh, very nice changes, especially the uh, alternative to System D. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and install all the applications I need, make sure everything runs. Uh, while I'm producing this video, if I run into any issues, I will leave it down in the comments below. Uh, the only issue that I've noticed in my sh like hour that I've been kind of playing around with it is uh, when I plugged in my uh, Blue Yeti microphone, it didn't recognize it when I plugged it in. Uh, I restarted the system, it recognized it, so I don't know. That's, that's the only thing negative I noticed thus far. Seems like a very nice base Arch install. Kind of reminds me of Endeavor OS without all the purple. Uh, other than that, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe. I'll be, I will be live streaming uh, much more often in the coming weeks, so do expect that. Uh, mostly uh, Linux-based stuff or gaming, simple things like that. I'm trying to figure out a specific time to start doing that, so uh, I'll be posting on the YouTube community page. You guys might see that, might not. It all depends on if YouTube likes me or not. So please let me know down in the comments if you're using an Arch-based system and what you're using, whether that be just a vanilla Arch install, if you use like Arch Vice script to install it, or if you're using something like Endeavor, Manjaro, or Arctic Linux. Again, thank you to all you guys who joined my live stream last time and suggested that I go ahead and check this out. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. If you absolutely hated it, dislike it. I hope you all have a beautiful day and good.